bring this forth. You're welcome. Hi, we're here. <laughs> Maureen's here too. Yeah. <laughs> we need put, to put her back on the camera. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I need to switch some cameras here. Yeah, this one. There? Yeah. Okay. That yeah. That's okay. Yep. Yeah. So then go to share. That okay. And advance. Advance. Advance and yeah. that and advance. share that. Yeah. Hey, it works. <laughs> okay. What we want to, what we want to get across to you tonight is, um, we have a, a technique that we've developed to uh, color ties. Um, uh, most of you know we do uh, uh, shows from coast to coast and time and so on, and we walk the lines and we found out all sorts of different things that ties are actually uh, the colors are different, uh, the spacings are different. So what we're going to do is uh, we have a, a technique that we're going to show you of the coloring of them. Uh, that's one of our drawings right there. I'm in AutoCAD and that's uh, our old scale and it's a tie and stringer assembly. So Maureen's going to show you exactly how we do this. Yeah, well, I take all the ties um, first off and distress them all. So I, I use a fine tooth razor saw. I think we sort of went over this the last session. Um, this one's got 42 uh, teeth to the inch. So I use quite a bit of pressure just to run across all sides of the ties. I'll just do a couple here for you. So you can, you know, put them on a diagonal little twists and then knock them with the point or whatever and put some knots in. Just um, just enough to pop that uh, that grain up so it will accept the, uh, the die. I'll do one more here. And then what I do is I'm going to color them in three different colors. I've got three um, disposable containers here. I'm going to put um, I think tonight I'm going to use a light brown, a medium brown, and um, a dark brown stain. So in the first one, I'll put a little bit of light brown and medium brown in the second one. And some dark brown in the third. You could use other colors. You could use a driftwood maybe and a, a cordovan brown maybe Thai brown. So whatever colors you like, or light gray and creosote black and medium brown, whatever. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little batch and, and pour it into the light brown, pour some into the light brown, some into the medium brown, and then some into the dark brown. And then I'll just kind of stir them up here. I've got a cheap dollar store brush. And if you want them really, really dark, just leave them in for a long time. Pop some of them out very quickly and leave some in longer. So you've got varying colors. If you've got tiny, small parts, you could use a, a metal sieve like that. Put all the tiny parts in there and then just dunk them into the, into the uh, dish with the stain. I should have my gloves on. So I'm just leaving them in there for a couple minutes. This is COVID friendly. <laughs> and then what you want to do is just pop them out into a paper towel or a newspaper. Just like that. Spread them out a little bit to dry. You can mix them up. They don't have to be um, in any special order because you're just going to put them haphazardly onto the stringer. The dark ones. Thank you. They're a little bit wet. Mix them all up. You can see already that there's different sh uh, shades 
and it's all brown, but there's different shades of it. And one thing about using the tie, if you distress all four sides, you can pick up any given tie and you get four different versions of it. And whichever one looks the best, that's the one that you put in, in uh, on the top to view. Okay. So I'm just gonna set them aside for a minute here and get my stringer assembly over on the drawing. I would normally be building this um, this upside down and putting every fourth tie on just to let those stringers set up and then flip them over and, and um, glue the rest of the ties on there. But I've already started this one. I've, I've done this um, other part here you see in a driftwood, a cordobon brown and a tie brown, it, it's, it's pretty dark. And then I took my creosote black and used it as a wash just to go over all the ties. So we'll see ties, how. ties especially are greasy, grimy, crappy stuff. Just gotta make sure my glue is working. I used tight bond, so I'm gonna glue these ties onto this stringer with um, tight bond. So you can see here, I'm just putting a little string of glue. Don't use too much, it'll be used out on your ties. Kind of off the drawing there. And then just take your ties, any color. Usually what I do is I start and do every fourth tie. So I'll get that one on. And you can use your, I use a tweezers just to get my excess glue off. Stick another one on here. Those tweezers are really handy. <laughs> you notice where she wipes the excess glue? <laughs> <laughs> Good thing white glue is non-toxic. <laughs> Can you imagine doing that with the CA glue? <laughs> I put CA2 on my finger when I tried slicing it off. <laughs> I'd have a lot of ties stuck to my hand. <laughs> okay. Two more here. I really like the color of these, actually. I haven't used this combination before, but I'm kind of liking it. Oops. might be wandering here a little bit. Quite a bit, I think. So you can see how it's shaping up. Every tie has got its own, some light, some dark. When we uh, walk the lines the way we have, we take pictures of various uh, colors that they they show and, and so on and and how uh, um, the whole character of the end of the tie and how it, uh, it how it uh, cracks in the middle and so on. Hey Rick, there's a question from YouTube here from Bob Ross here. Can you recommend a method or color combination that will produce very sun bleached ties like you would find in the desert? Yeah, probably in the desert, you're probably looking at a, a brownish tinge or a gray tinge. Um, it would be lighter colors for sure. 
So driftwood might be nice. Yeah, driftwood too. might be a good one. Or light gray. Or light gray might be a good one. Yeah. Sandalwood is another nice um, light color. Okay. That's pretty good. Okay, so every tie is very distinctly its own color and shade. Now it's a creosote black, and that is going to cohere all the ties together. Well, really, first you would normally let this set up. <laughs> it's a little bit wet right now, but I will put the uh, creosote black on. But those look those colors look pretty good. Again, it's it's a, a train. It's oily. It's greasy. It's crappy stuff along the, the ties. So, so this this is the creosote black, and I'm just gonna put a wash right over all those ties just to uh, just to cohere, just to cohere all the colors. I might just we are big believers in dry brushing, but uh, a lot of times when we're doing the ties like this, we like it very wet so that it does drip below. So there's just a, a subtle wash, black wash on there. So what you can do now is I, I would normally, again, just let that dry up, but you can take the creosote black or you can use um, our Thai brown, which is really, really dark. It's much darker than the black and um, do your dry brushing now in the areas where you might find that grease. So it might be down, you know, the middle of the, of the uh, ties that you want to build that up. So just take it straight from the bottle and just, you know, not evenly. Just down the center. Kind of hard to see on there, but it's wet right now, but when it dries, it will, um, you'll be able to see that streak down the center. But that's what I usually do. And you can keep building up on that color as well. Now, is there different weathering between the diesel and the steam era? Yeah. Um, steam era, all the grease is on the mechanisms outside. So the grease usually falls uh, just inside the track, but mostly outside the track. Uh, so then you would put a lot of uh, weathering along there. Um, a diesel, uh, most of it is down the center, all uh, the grease dripping and so on. So uh, yeah, there is a difference between the steam and the diesel. Uh, how about electric? Well, if it's electric, <laughs> you still have grease falling. <laughs> And that'll probably be on the outside of the rail. Um, actually, the electric is just like a diesel. Oh, okay. The traction motors are in the same place. Oh, oh, okay. There you go. We're trying to develop a technique right now of how to improve the look of flex track. Uh, flex track is all one color, and we're we're trying to get away from that. So we have four of our uh, weathering mixes that are actually a pigment in them. Uh, we've discussed this before at previous clinics and we're trying to come up with an idea of how to do it. Now most of the flex track already has a, a, an embossing on it. It's a texture that's already built in, but you can't see it. So Maureen's gonna show you what we're trying to get developed here. Now we haven't, this is the first time we've ever shown this. You could use um, our cement color, which is the, one of the pigments. Uh, we've got shale as well. The cement's kind of a taupey color. Shale is a gray color. Um, and we've got cottage white too, if you 
if you wanted to use white, but I think this cement looks really good. So I just take, take it straight from the bottle and just brush it on that um, plastic track, ties. The whole point is not to make the, the flex track tie have a little bit of character. Yeah, you could put this on, let it dry, and then put, um, you could take your creosote black as well and dry. I don't know if you can, can you see that? Yep, it's coming up. Is it? Yeah. It just gets away from that, you know, that plastic shine that you got on there. And then by the time you get your ballast on there, hey. Yeah, it looks good. And it's quick and easy. Doesn't take long. Another fine point is when, when Maureen and I walked the line, I tried to impress on her that, yes, symmetry has a lot to do with ties, but that they're very crooked too. So they don't have to be symmetric. If you notice uh, back up on uh, up here, you see some of them are a little different width apart, uh, different length and stuff like that. We get those all the time, especially on older railways. So it's not out of line to, to, uh, to have them scattered off. There, so just adds a little bit of character, I think. And I don't, I don't know that you can see on, in this with this camera, but can you see the lines there? <laughs> it's they've kind of the stain has kind of oozed into the uh, the grain of that plastic. Mm. You can see how this one, how it's drying up now. Yeah. It's starting to lighten just a little bit. <clears throat> hmm. yeah. So we're, we're trying this uh, flex track thing. We're, we're, uh, we, we thought of actually doing its own colors and calling it a tie enhancer, but um, we're finding that we can actually use the, the products that we already have on the market mm -hmm. and, and actually different combinations of the color like the shade give you a, a different look again compared to the cement color. Mm -hmm. Rick, if you, yeah. this is Clark, um, if you spray that. Clark track, who? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Fine, I'll just talk to Maureen. <laughs> <laughs> you usually do. <laughs> Well, I love you too. Um, really? <laughs> yeah. If you if you spray that track, what I've been doing is spraying all my flex track with the um, oh Krylon camouflage brown. Okay. And then come back with your colors. It will set off those rails, and then the rail is is weathered. Um, and you can just do the ties and moy. I think your method would uh, would really work with that idea. Yeah, sounds good. Sounds, sounds good. good. Yeah. Like I say, we're just experimenting with this. Like, uh, yeah, at this point, it's what it we have that we're looking at. Yeah. As a side note, I need to talk to you uh, one afternoon regarding another podcasty thing. So, okay. Yep. So I think that's it for tonight. If there's any other questions. Yeah, uh, this is Greg. I have a question, Maureen. When you uh, distress the wood with yeah. your razor saw, mm -hmm. do you generate any fuzzies or does the, does the wood itself determine whether you're more likely to get fuzzies or not? Yeah, I, with, with, uh, with the ties I just did, there, wasn't, there were no fuzzies. Um, you gotta remember it, that our ties are actually a uh, uh, a pine. Uh, 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 like, okay. it's, it's different than than the basswood. Okay. Yes. Yes. Um, okay. It used to be uh, the tradition was to always use sugar pine because it's a high moisture wood, 
and if you wanted to spike it, uh, it wouldn't uh, it's, it wouldn't split as much. Okay, uh -huh. using the the. But um, uh, Tim and uh, from Fast Tracks and uh, Jerry from Mount Albert, they mm -hmm. uh, did a lot of things. sugar pine. Sometimes there's shortages, and most of the sugar pine comes from California. Uh -huh. So we wanted to see what could we do locally. So actually now we make them all out of white pine. Ah. It's, it's a really good grade of white pine, but much content is basically the same and it's readily available. Wow. Well, so that's, I, I, I wonder if there's any thoughts of, of making other wood products out of that, like siding and trim work and stuff. I don't know. I, um, it doesn't have the strength that basswood does. Okay. Okay, especially for bridges that carry a lot of weight. <laughs> but uh, hey, sure. Uh, we've just switched to, to white pine all the time now. All right. Well, thank you. That answers that. Yeah, I don't. I don't usually get a lot of fuzz even on the basswood. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, once in a while I'll get a a hunk and I just pull it off with the tweezers. <laughs> yeah. But. Yeah, I don't get a lot with that uh, razor saw. We, we find that when the stain hits, uh, okay, sometimes it shows a little bit of fuzz. And uh, opposed to taking it off wet, wait till it dries and then just pull it off. Mm -hmm. All right, so thank you. Too much. There's a uh, uh, Maureen, from the I really chat. Well, from, from the chat, Nancy wants to know, are the pigment stains water or alcohol based? We are alcohol based, 70% isopropyl alcohol and leather dyes. Right. 